Singapore's transport minister says collective action is needed for decisive climate action to tackle the transboundary nature of transport emissions. He outlined collaboration on sustainable aviation, such as with New Zealand, which could serve as a starting point for future work in greener fuels. Melissa Go with more. Players at Temasek's Ecosperity event outlined the need for action across land, sea and air to achieve net zero ambitions. Transport Minister S. Iswaran said Singapore accounts for 0.1 percent of global emissions. But as a major international transport hub, its actions can help drive change well beyond its borders. Air and sea transport are network services that thrive on scale. Their emissions accounting for 2 and 3 percent respectively of global emissions, are transboundary in nature. The impetus for decisive climate action therefore lies in collective action. He adds that leadership in international maritime and aviation is key. Discussions are ongoing at both fora on more ambitious long-term emissions mitigation targets for the international maritime and aviation sectors. The challenge, as with all multilateral efforts, is to balance the ambitious targets that reflect the sector's commitment to strong global climate action with the need for inclusivity. Singapore is also looking to go further and faster within the country. Some efforts are already bearing fruits. In the first five months of this year, 8.4% of all new cars registered were electric. That's more than twice the rate in 2021 and 20 times that in 2020. Another major thrust is eco-friendly fuel. Work is underway to ensure Singapore is well-placed to provide them as part of a multi-fuel solution and as the technology matures and takes off. Land, sea and air transport all share the eco-severity stage today as some of the biggest players in the business compared notes on what's taking flight, what's making waves or just stalling. New Wrong Way sat in on hours of panel discussions to bring us this report. Electricity may already be powering cars, but there's still ways to go before it takes flight. The aviation sector reckons electric planes could work for short-haul flights, but not so much for long distances. Long-haul flights make up only a quarter of air traffic, but produce three quarters of carbon emissions, making zero emission solutions like hydrogen ideal, but still out of reach. It is still today very expensive to produce hydrogen and it's four times the volume of kerosene so it's hard to sort of take it on long-haul flights. Industry players say it's not just the cost but also the lack of airport infrastructure that's holding back hydrogen's buy-in. Meanwhile, on the water where 90% of global trade takes place, the maritime sector is taking further steps to transition to green fuels. On the horizon, a pilot program by the Global Centre for Maritime Decarbonisation will look at how biofuels work in selected vessels and on ports to provide transparency and traceability. It's to aggregate demand at the port side. Um, it's to build up uh, the supply chain and the infrastructure on the port side. Digitalization is one solution also in play, along with boosting efficiencies across the system. Maritime is more complex than aviation because our sector is pretty much more heterogeneous. Yeah. Um, and there are also different many touch points uh, in terms of shipyards, in terms of standards, in terms of uh, equipment. The common goal for both aviation and maritime is to get to net zero by 2050. Clearly, challenges still remain from infrastructural needs to financing options to help transport players move towards their sustainability targets. The consensus here is that clear national policies, further international cooperation and robust private sector buy-in are needed to accomplish real change. That means everyone across air, land and sea sectors must be on board.